How many of you know one of those people that fatally misjudges the distance somewhere they're driving? I am one of those people. A couple of years ago, I was invited to a stag do in Tenby in South Wales. And um, I, at the time, I lived in Nottingham. And before I left, I made the critical error of not putting the distance between Nottingham and Tenby into Google Maps. I thought it would take maybe two hours to get there. Six and a half hours later, in the middle of the night, I arrived very, very late. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Wales. Every time I drive through it, it takes like four times as long as I expect. But it doesn't look that big on a map. I think many of us see the solar system in the same way. We see lots of pictures like this, not like that, like this, <laughs> um, that are really out of scale. And we think, it can't really be that far to another planet. Well, I'm a PhD student studying astronomy. And today I want to share with you a uh, brief journey through the, the, the immense scale of the universe, starting with Earth and, well, we'll see where we end up. So let's start with this guy, our home, the Earth. In the 1970s, a guy called Dave Kuntz decided to walk all the way around the Earth. That task took him four years. What were you doing four years ago? Can you remember? Can you imagine if all the time between then and now had just been spent walking? The Earth is big, and it's so easy to forget that in the age of aircraft. But the Earth is also really small. If we shrink the Earth down to just the size of this bead, six millimeters across, how big would the other planets be in comparison? Well, Jupiter, the largest planet, would be the size of this tennis ball. How big would the Sun be? Well, this big. This is the Earth, and this is the Sun, and this is why you should wear sunblock. Thanks, it's been great. <laughs> but in reality, even the Sun is really small. My area of research is galaxies. And galaxies are some of the most amazing objects in the universe. This is an artist's impression of the galaxy we call home, the Milky Way. What is a galaxy? Well, a galaxy is a collection of stars, gas, dust, and a few other things thrown in. I say this is an artist's impression of our galaxy because it's so big that we've never actually left it. No man-made object has ever left our galaxy to take a photo like this. We see the Milky Way more like this. And this is because the Milky Way is like a disk, like a pancake, and we're inside it. So when we look out in the direction of the pancake, we see lots of stars. When we look up, we see less. You can see this on a really clear night, even here in the UK. And it's one of the biggest objects you'll ever see with the naked eye. How big is a galaxy in comparison to our solar system? Well, if we take our solar system and we squash it down to just the size of a penny, how big do you think our galaxy is? It's the size of the North American continent. So to everyone who wonders why the aliens haven't found us yet, if I was to leave a penny for you somewhere in the North American continent for you to find, you might have some trouble too. But in all seriousness, our galaxy is mind-blowingly vast, and we're not the only galaxy. Just next door, on galactic scales, we have this guy, the Andromeda Galaxy, the beloved wallpaper of all Apple computers in the early 2000s. Now, the Andromeda Galaxy was recently the subject of one of the most high-resolution images ever taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. And I love how this image shows just how large galaxies are. Hubble imaged this region of Andromeda, and this is the result. Now, this image has 1.5 billion pixels, and there's no way I can show them all on this, on this projector. So let's zoom in. If we zoom in on this region, we can start to see what almost looks like a dusty, noisy background. And that isn't anything to do with the camera. What is it? Well, we'll see. If we zoom in a little bit more. We can see a few points of light. They almost look like um, sand or pebbles on a beach. If we zoom in one final time, I can tell you that each point of light that you're seeing here is actually an individual star, many of which will be like our own sun, and many of which will have planets. Scientists estimate there are almost a trillion stars in the Andromeda galaxy. The Milky Way and Andromeda are two of the big three galaxies that make up our local group. The third is this guy. Triangulum. And he's a little bit smaller than the other two. But there are many more galaxies out there. 
Over the Christmas period in 1995, the Hubble Space Telescope had some free time to take a sequence of images of an area of the sky that appeared completely dark. Now, this area of the sky was tiny, and a little bit of audience participation here. What I want you to do is stretch out your arm and give me a thumbs up. Close one eye and look at the fingernail on your thumb. The area of the sky that Hubble imaged was the same relative size as the fingernail is on your thumb right now. That's a tiny area of the sky, and this was the image that was sent back. Every point of light that you can see here is not a star, but a distinct galaxy. There are over 3,000 distinct galaxies in this image, just in that tiny area of the sky. How many more galaxies must there be out there? Well, my area of research is galaxy evolution. And um, that means I study how galaxies change and evolve on the very largest scales. I recently wrote a piece of software which allows me to visualize the universe, the extragalactic universe, in 3D. And I'm going to show you a short clip from it now. Each point of light that you can see here is not, an, not a star, but an individual galaxy. Just a little recap. If our solar system is a penny, our galaxy is the North American continent. And that's an average, run-of-the-mill galaxy. Every point of light you can see here is a galaxy. That's mind-blowing. There are three million galaxies in this visualization. And that's not, a, not at all an overestimate. In fact, a paper published a couple of years ago estimated that the total number of galaxies in the universe is approximately two trillion. Now, if I take that number and I multiply it by the sort of average number of stars in each galaxy, we get a ballpark figure for the total number of stars there must be in the universe. And that number is mind-blowingly large, 10 sextillion. That's 10 with 21 zeros after it. Now, that number doesn't mean much to me, even knowing all about the maths behind it stuff. But if I tell you that it's the same number of grains of sand on every beach in the entire world, it starts to hit you. What I want you to do is, the next time you're at a beach, bend down, get a single grain of sand on the tip of your finger. It's quite actually quite hard to do. Look at that grain of sand. That grain of sand is our sun. Look out across that vast beach. For every grain of sand that you can see across that beach, across the entire world, somewhere out there in the universe, there is a star, many of which will be like our own sun, and many of which will have planets. There's one more image I'd like to show you. When the Voyager 1 space probe became the first man-made object to leave our solar system, it turned around and took a sequence of images. These images were being beamed back to Earth for 13 hours before they were received. When they were put back together, composited, the result astounded astronomy. And here it is. Some of you are thinking, what? <laughs> Isn't that what happens when you take a photo with an old camera and you, like, expose the lens? You know? Let me make it clear for you. What you're seeing is mostly empty space, but right here is a solitary, pale blue dot. That's the Earth. Every human being you know, every human being you've ever known, every human being you've ever heard of, called that pale blue dot home. So the next time you're out there staring at a starry sky, spare a moment's thought for just how mind-blowingly vast our universe is and just how small we are in comparison. Thank you very much. <laughs>